Hey y'all, welcome to Facing the 50s. My name's Deanne. Here on this channel, we talk about all things beauty for the mature woman. Today, we're gonna to be talking about how to get the most skin-like finish using what I call our secret weapon, the Perfector Sponge. So if you're interested to find out, just keep watching. Okay, so you can see I have already done uh, my eyes and that's actually part of the process that I'll talk about here in just a second. So the first thing let me do is pin some of this hair back out of the way and let's get started. So if you've reached out to me for a color match, I have more than likely recommended the Perfector Sponge. And I will be honest, when I first started with this makeup, uh, I almost passed on it because I thought it's just a sponge. There's other sponges out there. I don't need that sponge. Uh, well, the more I've used it and the more I've used it, and I've used this now for two years, uh, the more I have learned that it can absolutely help you get that really natural skin-like finish and still get great coverage. So our Perfector sponge, so it's a beauty sponge. It looks very very similar to many beauty sponges that are out there on the market, but we use it a little differently. So we don't use it to apply the, the foundation or the creams. You know, I know a lot of times if you have a liquid foundation and uh, you may use a beauty blender to actually apply it. So we don't, we don't do that. The use of our perfector and where the magic comes in is it will remove excess. And if you saw one of my last videos, you know, one of the number one problems that we have is putting on too much of the cream and this will help remove some of that excess. So I recommend it to pretty much everybody when I do a color match. Okay, so in a second, I will show you how to use this, but we've got to prepare it first. So you want to get it wet. Uh, when you get a brand new Perfector out of the tin, this is a brand new one, never, never been wet at all. Uh, it's, it's pretty dense, it's pretty stiff. Uh, and, and it will do nothing for your skin if you start to use it on there. Here's the one uh, that I'm using today and uh, you can tell I've been using it. It's already uh, been uh, run under water and dampened properly. And so you can see it's about twice the size and it is super, super soft. And that's part of the magic of the Perfector. So if it is too wet, it is just gonna remove any makeup that you've put on. If it is too dry and too stiff like this, it's really not going to do anything for you. So we got to get it kind of like Goldilocks. We kind of get it, get it just right. So I'm going to jump here to a clip of me showing you how to actually prepare your Perfector sponge so that you can get the best finish. Okay, first I've got a Perfector here that just came out of the package. It, it's actually a discontinued color. Uh, but never used it, never even been wet, so it's still even got the wrinkles in it from the packaging. But see how, uh, and this is one that I use every day, see how they're basically the same size. So what I want to show you is what this one will look like in comparison when we're done. So I'll set that one to the side. So here's how you are going to prepare your perfector. I get the water running, I take my sponge, and I start to run it, uh, put it under the water, and then I squeeze. And I squeeze a few times. I'm gonna just take it and squeeze it several times while it's running under the water so that it can absorb as much water as possible. That's one of the, the keys. All right, so when I've done that a few times, I will turn the water off and then right now it would be way too wet to use on your face because you can still squeeze water out of it. That is going to pull any makeup that you have off of your face. So I want to squeeze, I'm squeeze again, then squeeze again. I'm going to get every last bit of water that I can get out of it that way. And then I'm going to grab a towel of some sort that's really absorbent and I'm going to put it in the towel. I'm going to wrap the towel around it and I'm going to squeeze some more. I'm not twisting because I don't want to damage the sponge, but I'm just going to squeeze as hard as I can. And then I'll move it to a different part of the towel that's dry and I'm going to squeeze some more. Squeezing pretty hard, as hard as I can, because I want to make sure that I get as much of that water out of there as possible. So I'll do this a few times, probably two or three times, just until it feels super light, spongy, and bouncy. And now let me show you the difference in the sizes of the sponges. So the one that's been damped, damp, the one that is dampened, is quite a bit larger than the one that's dry. 
So here's the other thing I will do. I've got this little um, beauty sponge holder I got off of Amazon and I will just set it in there and set it on my vanity while I take my shower and while I do my eyes because I usually do my eyes first. What that allows it to do is even air dry even further so that when I get ready to use it, it is there's there's no way that it is too damp. So like right now, if I were to pounce it on my hand, it doesn't leave any water. It just feels slightly cool to the touch. And that's what we're wanting with our perfector. That's the, the magic spot for the perfector. Okay. Now that we know how to prepare our perfector, and I've got mine that's been sitting here, I'm gonna show you how it works in action. So I'm gonna start just the way I would start putting on my makeup every morning. I'm going to grab my Everyday Palette and I'm gonna start with my color corrector here, which is Mango, okay? So as always, I just tap into there a little bit, get a little bit on the brush, and I start buffing. And I'm gonna buff anywhere where I've got redness, hyperpigmentation, any of those darker points on my face. And the reason I use mango is because it, it matches the depth of those darker points on my face. Now, when I do your color match, I will tell you which color corrector you should use. Maybe mango, maybe not. All depends on your skin tone and the issues that you're trying to cover up. So I pretty much have redness all the way through the center, all the way around my cheeks. So I kind of go with a little bit of mango almost all over. I actually will layer two or three colors, which is another reason why the Perfector sponge is so critical so that I can make sure and take off any excess in between layers. All right, let me check here and see how I'm doing. Uh, I also want to go in under my eyes. Where's my brush for that? There it is. I'm gonna go in a little bit under my eyes because I don't know if you can see here, but I've got some darkness here. It's almost kind of like a blue-like darkness and I just get a little mango on my brush and go in under there to start that color correcting. Now again, if I were to leave this mango on just alone, it would be too warm for my face, but it is what I need as that base layer to color correct. So I'll show you how to layer so that it all matches. All right, looking pretty good. I wanna put a tiny bit more on my chin. My chin's where I have a lot of redness. Chin and nose where I have the most redness there. Okay, so I've got my color corrector on. Now, I'm gonna take my perfector and I do this in between each layer and notice that I am dabbing it, I'm tapping it, I'm pushing it onto my face. And so what it's doing, it's doing a couple of things actually, especially under my eyes here. It's doing a couple of things. One, it's removing any excess that was on there and it's really pressing that into the skin to help it look more like skin. That's what gives me that skin-like finish. Not pulling, not swiping. I don't want to move any of that corrector I just put on. I'm just removing any excess. And if you happen, you know, to remove a little, you know, more than you want, if you happen to accidentally pull or whatever, just put a little more on and then perfect it. Okay, so there's that. Now I'm going to go in and I'm gonna use that same brush. I can you know, wipe it off just a little bit on a cloth if I want to, but not even really necessary. And I'm gonna go in, let me see if I can do this without blinding you here. So that was mango I used. I'm gonna go in here with my main highlight, which is candle lit. So I'm gonna pounce it in there just a few times. Now this one, I'm going to stipple. And by stipple, I mean press. Because I don't want to buff this layer on, because if I buff this layer on, I'm just going to kind of move around that mango. And uh, I don't want to do that, because I just worked hard to get it where I wanted. So this is why you see me do a lot of short, quick tapping motions. So what this does, this starts to build up my coverage. 
and it starts to tone down some of the warmth of that mango. All of this I explain in your color match how to use it, but the process is pretty similar. Now I even go up under my eye just a little bit and I could have swapped back to that smaller brush, probably should because it's a little bit easier. Go up under there to tone down that warmth and really build that coverage. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and perfect this side of the face. And the perfecter does not feel wet at all. Like I said, if, if it feels wet, it's too wet. It feels a little bit cool when you touch your face. And I really make sure and try to get that jawline and really under the eyes, especially right here in this outer, outer corner, because when I smile, I get those little fine lines and that's kind of where makeup tends to pull. So I like to make sure I've gotten any excess away from there. Okay, so I don't know if you can tell. So this is starting to look um, more, you know, natural. Where This one's still a little too warm. Uh, this is a little flat, so we're going to contour here in a minute and still add our brightener, but it is starting to match my skin tone. Okay, so candle lit over here now, so let me do that really quickly. Okay, so even on both sides of my face. Now I'm going to go in with my brightening highlight. So I'm going to grab a different brush. Uh, this one is the detail brush. I'm going to use this end for contour and I'm going to use this end for under the eyes. So what I'm going to do, so remember I've got a layer of mango on to color correct and then I put a little bit of candlelit on to kind of tone down the warmth and to make it match. So now I want that brightening effect. If I had just gone in with this brightener, since I have darkness under there, I, I could kind of get that gray look under my eyes and I don't want that. Uh, so that's why I build the color under there. Uh, so I'm going to go into my brightening highlight here, which is white peach. Just tap that in, get a little on the brush. And I like to put just a little bit on the inner and outer corner and then I start to connect. I don't necessarily do that whole big triangle. Doesn't work on me, doesn't work on a lot of, you know, folks. But if it works on you, fine. But I just kind of do this little almost half circle. And again, since I do like a little bit of brightness right out here on the outer corner, I'll put a little bit there, but I make sure to perfect quite a bit because I that's that's one place where, where it can pull, like I said, and, and I could skip that part, but I really like just a little dot of brightness there. All right, so I'm gonna come a little bit down my nose. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm also going to, I wanna do a little bit right here. Get a little brightness going here in the center. So without even thinking, I grabbed my perfector because I know I'm on my third layer. So I am being very sure to perfect. So again, this is why I recommend the perfector to everybody because especially when you're first starting, if you're needing to layer colors like this, you're going to put too much on and this will be your best friend in helping you not do that. All right, a little bit more brightener I'm going to need. Uh, I like to brighten just a tiny bit right here because I find sometimes I've got darkness around my nose. And then I put a little bit of brightener on my chin so that I'm basically brightening just this whole center center spot. And if you touch your face and it feels sticky, then one of the things may be that you need to perfect some more. And there's some other things that actually impact that that, have, that are coming up in another video. But if you touch your face and it feels sticky, then grab that perfector, give it another go. Remembering not to swipe, not to pull, just to tap. Okay, so let me speed through and do my contour and my lip and cheek, 
and then I'm gonna come back with a couple of great tips for you on storing your perfector and on cleaning your perfector. So hold tight. Okay, so that's it. That's the look. Now, the couple of tips I have for you. One, cleaning your perfector. So do the same thing that you just saw me do as far as washing my per perfector, but use a little bit of mild facial cleanser. So I, I've got one in there. I think it's it's Vanna Cream. Um, if I can uh, find a picture of it or take a picture, I'll, I'll drop it right up here. But you don't have to have that. Just any, you know, whatever you use on your face is fine. I just wouldn't use anything with, with active ingredients. So if you use something with salicylic acid or anything like that, I wouldn't. Uh, but just some gentle cleanser would be is perfect for this and then let it dry and to let it dry my biggest tip so when you get it it comes in this cute little let me see if i can get the glare gone there cute little tin uh, and you'll you may be tempted to store it just like this don't because when you store it just like this you can see that's almost airtight underneath the sponge and that is a breeding ground for bacteria so you don't want to do that. What I would highly recommend is just hop on Amazon or something like that. Grab one of these. I, I can't remember. This was three or four dollars maybe. Uh, and I found it on Amazon. Just search beauty sponge holder and, and you'll see some different kinds. And as you can see, when I put it in there, it, it allows air all the way around the sponge so it can dry better. All right, so if you have any questions about how to use the Perfector, drop them down below. I will be glad to answer those for you. Uh, appreciate you spending some time with me today, and I will see you in the next video.